In Magaya, there are different ways to receive items. For example, a purchase order or pickup order can be converted into a warehouse receipt depending on your workflow. You can also receive data about arriving items from an EDI connection, or you can create a warehouse receipt manually. Let's walk through the steps. To create a warehouse receipt manually, go to Warehousing Warehouse Receipts. Click the Add button. All the details you enter in the dialog box will fill into the document automatically. We'll start on the General tab. Include as much or as little as you need. Some fields are filled in already, such as the warehouse receipt number, the dates, employee, and your company who is the one issuing the order. Set the times. Document numbering can be changed in Maintenance, Configuration, Document Numbering. The Issued By field can display your warehouse or warehouse provider that you are using for this transaction. If you have different divisions, create them and use them here. They're useful for managing items and orders in different warehouses if you have more than one. If your warehouse is bonded, select the type. To activate this field, find it in the configuration menu under Company and check the box for bonded warehouse. Next, in the warehouse receipt, go to the Shipper Consignee tab. The shipper is often a supplier, the manufacturer, or wholesaler, the one who sent you the cargo, or it could be your customer. If their name is not in the drop-down list, add it by clicking on the plus sign and selecting the entity type. The shipper's address will fill in automatically based on the details in their profile. Click here to change the address if needed. Now, select the consignee if you know it. If you don't, leave it blank. The client to bill is the one who is paying for your 3PL services. When you select the client to bill, then the system fills in this entity by default on the charges dialog box when you add charges to the charges tab. This makes it easier and faster to add charges to a warehouse receipt and other transactions. Of course, you can change the entity on a charge manually. We'll cover that when we get to the charges tab. The mode of transportation is the mode that is being used to transport the items to the warehouse. This field is connected to the Charges tab also to make it easier to enter freight charges. You may not be the person entering charges when receiving the cargo or items. These fields can be edited later by your accounting department depending on your company's workflow. The supplier may be the same as the shipper or not. Select the entity. Enter the invoice number and or purchase order number if available. These numbers can be useful later to find this transaction because this transaction number is the reference number of your customer. If the warehouse receipt is being created by converting an existing purchase order, then the purchase order number will fill in automatically. On the Carrier tab, enter the Overland Trucking Company or other carrier. The PRO number is the Inland Carrier's Bill of Lading, also called a Progressive Number. The Commodities tab of the Warehouse Receipt is the place where you will add the items that arrive in the warehouse. Items that are defined in your system as inventory item definitions include part numbers that are assigned to the customer, making it easy to receive the items. You can also add loose items, kits, items that are perishable or have variable weights or lot numbers. Let's look at the buttons on the Commodities tab one at a time. To add a loan item, one that does not have any items inside it, click the Add button. When you add a commodity, a new dialog box opens. It has a lot of tabs, which gives you the flexibility to add as much information as you need. Select the part number or enter the description and other details. If a customer sends you large cases that you will need to break down later to distribute the items inside the case, then you can define that as a nested or compound part number in your Magaya system. If items arrive with an existing barcode label, you can scan it to get the details if you define that item in the inventory items definition list. If a box arrives that has multiple serial numbers inside it, scan the 2D barcode on the box to extract all the serial numbers inside it, such as electronics. This receives item at the piece level 
which will be helpful when releasing items later to fill orders. If you have an integration, then the serial numbers can arrive in advance. The inventory item definition also lets you decide to save the serial numbers as items are released. When using WMS mobile barcode scanners, you can receive items that are in tasks. See the knowledge base for articles on WMS Mobile. Other options available with WMS Mobile include receiving overstock, which are more items than expected. The receiving process done with the WMS Mobile scanners or the Dimensioner scale enables you to receive many items quickly. See the knowledge base for articles. You can configure your Magaya to allow SKUs. You can receive the SKUs in advance from the supplier and add them to the inventory item definition. The SKU field could also be used to store a UPC or other code depending on your needs. Let's continue with the fields on the commodity dialog box. To make receiving faster, define a default receiving location. It will fill in automatically for you. The Buy Totals field is volume and weight of all pieces together. This is useful if you don't know the weight of each box. The Quantity field is used to enter the quantity of items commercially purchased. This field is used if you are declaring insurance or if you need a commercial invoice to include the value per item. This is used for resale items. It's optional. On the Identification tab, Select a commodity type, save the serial number, add an expiration date, and more as needed. If the items are classified as hazardous, you can enter the item details on the Hazardous tab. The other tabs are available, but not often used when receiving items. Click OK to save the information in the Commodity dialog box and return to the Commodity tab in the Warehouse Receipt. If an item has other items inside it, such as a pallet or container, click the Add Container button. Enter as many details about the container as needed. The Refrigerated tab contains fields for the ventilation and temperature setup. Let's look at the other options on the Commodity tab. The Detail button is not active unless the item is a container with items inside it. Click it to open the dialog box for a container or package. Repacking is typically done in the warehouse after items are received and they need to be repacked to be shipped out by grouping them inside another package type or a container, so we won't use it now. To copy a commodity, right-click it. Charges entered in the Charges tab are integrated into the accounting system in Magaya and will appear on invoices, bills, etc. To add a charge, Click the Add button and select a charge type such as Storage. Remember the Client to Bill field on the Consignee tab? If you set that field on the Consignee tab, then that entity will automatically be filled into the Charges dialog box, making it easier to create charges. If you want to change the entity, select another entity from the drop-down list. If you want the charges to list in a certain order, right-click to move them up and down, and then select Output Charges as displayed. You can always change this later when you review the document. Other options available when you right-click on a charge include the option to recalculate or regenerate charges if you make changes. You would click the Generate button again to update the AR and AP transactions if you already made them. The system can also create recurrent invoices for your customers. On the Events tab, you can add events. These can be configured to work with the Transaction Tracking plugin, which can send notifications to your customer when an event occurs. The Attachments tab is used to add any photographs or documents to the warehouse receipt. Add any notes for the customer or internal notes for employees. Click OK to save and notice all the details filled into the document for you. If the list of part numbers is long, you can choose a summarized template. You can print or email the warehouse receipt using transaction tracking as needed. LiveTrack gives your customers 24-7 visibility. They can select columns to see detail, such as what is on hand and more. 
The put away of items can be set up in a sequence to facilitate order fulfillment and replenishment. We'll see the put away steps in another video. In the warehouse receipt list, there are many options. For example, click the detail button, select the panel to view, and tap the arrow button on your keyboard to view details quickly. Many reports can be created in the warehouse receipt list, in the commodity list, and in the inventory items definitions list. They're all connected to give you inventory visibility. Then filter the report by date and more. The last thing in this video is a quick way to save the list view. Follow these three easy steps. First, choose the items you want. Second, filter the list by preset date ranges or by using the standard or advanced filter to view the information you want. Third, save the view to use at any time you want. Check out the knowledge base for step-by-step -step articles you can print or email to help you use the software fully. Be sure to see the other videos in our 3PL series. Thank you.